Hey guys, it's Alyssa from AlyssaNalani.com. Welcome back to my channel. Today is another installment of the series that I am calling The Bible Study Project, which is where I am just sharing how I am putting together and kind of honing in my personal Bible study method and practice. And I'm doing this in the hopes that I can um, give you ideas and inspirations as you put together your own personal Bible study method and practice. As you saw from the title of the video, today I'm going to be talking about how to use a Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. When it comes to a deep study of the word, I find this to be one of the most, if not the most, <laughs> invaluable study resources to have on hand. We are going to be opening up the scriptures and looking up some verses, but before we do that, I want to just open up the concordance itself and give you just a little bit of a tour of how this book is set up and how it's meant to be used. Okay, so this volume is separated into four main sections, but before that, we have a bit of an introduction. And as you can see from the title, it says, um, it talks about how to get the most out of the concordance. And so it just talks about the different ways that it can be used and what to look out for. And if you've never used this, um, or you're, you know, opening it up for the first time, um, I would highly suggest not skipping over this because this is super helpful information. And then it has kind of the anatomy of the entry and what um, all the different parts are and what to look out for. And then it goes into our first section, which is the main concordance. Now, most Bibles have a concordance in the back of it. But obviously you can't fit all of this in the back of a Bible. So this is indeed quite exhaustive. And I'm trying to get to the end of it so you can see how much, okay. So this is all of the main concordance. And so this is most of the word occurrences in the King James Bible. I say most because we have another section here that has some more. But um, any word that you're looking for, um, it'll tell you where it's found and in what passage. So this is your main section, the main concordance, and then you have what is called the appendix of prepositions, pronouns, common words, etc. So words like a and am and among and 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 an and are and if in me shall that, than, them, there, all of those words. Um, if you want to find out where they're at, <laughs> you go to this appendix and it goes from A to Z. And oh, there, is, there are no Z words. So it goes from A to Y. Um, and you can find out all that information and where they occur in the text. The next section, section number three, is the first of two dictionaries. And this is the dictionary of the Hebrew and Aramaic words in the Bible. Let's see if I can find the end of it. It comprises this section. And at the beginning, it shows you the features of the dictionary entries and the Hebrew transliteration table. Now, I had to look up the word transliteration because I had not heard of it before, um, before using a concordance. Excuse me, I need a drink of water. And so transliteration is different than translation um, in that with translation, it just means um, knowing what a word means from one language to another, right? Whereas transliteration is how the word is spelled. So you can see in the entry, it says it has the lexical form, which is the actual Hebrew word in the Hebrew language with the Hebrew alphabet. Tra when you transliterate it, I think that's a word. <laughs> that sounds right. Translate, transliterate. Okay. When you transliterate it into English, we're going to take the Hebrew words or the Hebrew um, alphabet, the Hebrew letters, and then transliterate it into the English alphabet so that we can read the Hebrew in using our language, our alphabet. So um, you have the lexical form, and then you have the transliteration form, and then it gives you the definition, how it's used, so on and so forth, okay? So those are the features of the entries in the Hebrew Aramaic, bleh, Hebrew Aramaic dictionary, and then we have the same in the second dictionary, which is the dictionary of Greek words, okay? And again, the features and the transliteration table. Okay, and those are all your sections 
of the concordance. And it does have a couple of maps here as well in the back, which is kind of nice. Okay, now that we know what's inside the book, let's try using it. So I have a few Bibles here. I have my King James, my New King James, and an ESV. I mentioned, I believe, in my, I believe it was my updated Bible study bullet journal video that I parallel read. So I will, I use the King James kind of as my baseline. It's the translation I grew up with. It's the one I'm most familiar with. And when I'm studying, I will use this and then kind of toggle um, between a couple of other versions as well. It depends on how deep I want to study, how much time I have um, in my session, so on and so forth. But I'll usually parallel read with a couple of other versions. So what we're going to do is I'm going to read a couple of verses and then I'm going to pull out a word that um, we can check in the concordance for um, better rendering of what the original language says. Okay, so I'm in Proverbs. It's the book of the Bible that I'm currently studying. I am using this Bible as well as my ESV scripture journal and my Bible study bullet journal. And if you want to see how I'm using them, you can check out the video, um, the link for which is down below. So we're going to be in Proverbs chapter one, and I'm starting with verse one so we can get a little bit of context. And it says, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive instruction, I'm sorry, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge, and discretion. Okay, we're going to stop there. So in verse four, it says to give subtlety to the simple. Now, I think I know what subtle means, right? Um, but if I get, if I come across a word that I'm not terribly sure of the meaning of, or um, I, I, I'm pretty sure what it means, but I don't know the exact definition. What I will do first is go to the dictionary. This is your basic Merriam-Webster's dictionary that I have. Oh, look at that. I've had this for quite a long time. It seems some wear and tear. Um, the reason why I like to have hard copy books rather than just like Googling it, at, Googling it or looking it up online or whatever is because I am so easily distracted that if I'm constantly using a device while I'm studying, I could easily slip over to Instagram or my email or, you know, some other app that has nothing to do with what I'm doing and um, get sidetracked. So I like to have um, hard copy books if I can so that I am not so easily distracted. So we're going to go to the dictionary and look at the word subtle. Subtle means hardly noticeable, shrewd, perceptive, clever, sly. Okay, so the first, you know how to use a dictionary, right? So the first entry is hardly noticeable. It's subtle. Second um, definition would be shrewd and perceptive. And your third would be clever and sly. Now, when it comes to reading the Bible, you want to read in context, right? So you want to consider what the verse is before and after say. You want to consider um, the entirety of the text when you're considering what a word means. I hope that makes sense. So in other words, based on what these verses are saying, based on the fact that there are a few definitions for this word, we could pick out what that word is potentially meaning. Um, with a word like subtle, that's fairly easy to do. But sometimes you'll come across a word where it's not quite so um, easy to figure out. So here it says, hardly noticeable. That's probably not what it means. Shrewd and perceptive, that sounds about right. Clever and sly, that has a little bit of a negative connotation, um, especially with the sly. I don't think that Solomon was meaning for people to be sly. Clever, maybe, but perhaps shrewd and perceptive is more along the lines of where he was going. Okay, so you look it up in the dictionary and see um, what that word could potentially mean in the context of the verse. Now, another thing you could do 
is then go to another translation and see what it says. Now, I will be doing a video in the next week or so where I'll be talking about some things to consider with Bible translations. Um, but for now, I'm just going to go here to my New King James and see, this is my Bible from when I was a teenager, you guys. I've had this Bible so long. Well over a decade. Okay, so Proverbs chapter 1, verse 4. Okay, so verse 4 doesn't say subtlety. It says to give prudence to the simple, whereas the King James says to give subtlety to the simple. So now we're going getting somewhere. Prudence to the simple is what this says. And I looked it up already. It says the same thing in the ESV. It says prudence. So let's really quick take a look at what prudence means in the dictionary. P-R, P-R-O, P-R, O, come on. P-R-O, prudent. Here we go. Shrewd in management. We have that word shrewd again. Um, Shrewd in management of practical affairs, cautious, discreet, provident, frugal, judicious, foresighted. These are synonyms. Judicious, foresighted, sensible. Okay, so we've got that word shrewd again. We've got words like cautious and discreet. This is making a little bit more sense. So if you're going to take, if you're going to read the word, or I'm sorry, the verse, you could kind of substitute some of those words in. So to give prudence, to give discretion, maybe. Um, what was the other word? Shrewdness to the simple. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So we've looked it up in the dictionary. We've, we've kind of checked it out with another um, couple of versions. Both the KJV and the ESV use the word prudence. Now you're not going, if I'm going to look up the word prudence in the Strong's, you're not going to find that word come up with this verse. So in other words, it's only, um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> if I look up the word prudence, this reference isn't going to come up because that's not the word that is used in the King James. And this is meant to be used alongside the King James. So we're going to look up the word subtlety. Okay, so we're going to get limited space here. And I'm trying not to knock my stand and shake the camera. So QRST, right, subtle. You, I can read. <laughs> okay, so subtle T. Here we go. Okay, subtle T. Uh, right here, Proverbs one verse four is the reference to give subtlety. Now, when it looks up when you're in the actual word, right? It's not going to spell out the whole word subtlety in the entry. It's just going to give you that little um, S. It's a, um, bold and italicized. So that S signifies where the word is. So to give S or subtlety to the simple, to the young, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the line we're looking for. Let me get something to kind of line this up so you can see it. No, nope, no, nope, not Proverbs. We want... I mean, not Psalms, rather, not Proverbs. Okay, so here we go. I hope you can see that. And then it's going to give us the reference number. So it says H6195, okay? H6195. So we've looked up the word. We found the verse, the, um, the, um, the scripture that we were reading in originally. And now it's giving us a reference number where we can look it up in the Hebrew Dictionary. And that number is H6195. So I'm going to write down H6195. Okay. Now we're going to go to the Hebrew Dictionary and look up H6195. Okay, so not H60, H63. I've gone a little too far. H61, 92, 55, 97, 96, 95. Here we go. Okay, let's see if I can get this closer to you. 95. Ah! 
<laughs> I've got my stand in the way. Okay, so H16195 is right here. Um, it gives us the lexical uh, version of the word or form of the word, and then the transliterated ver version of the word. And the word is orma. I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly. Um, and it says, it's the feminine form of H6193, which if we go a little bit up, it's orem, which means craftiness, okay? So this is the feminine version of that word, orem, it's orma, and it means trickery, or in a good sense, and we're looking for the positive, right? Based on the context of what we were reading in Proverbs, we're looking for the positive. Discretion, guile, prudence, ah, so the ESV and the NKJV translators decided to use the word prudence, subtlety, um, wily, I don't know if I'm saying that word right, or wisdom, okay? So discretion is the meaning of that word. So, and you can also use prudence, subtlety, wisdom. So, as we're reading this, we could substitute the word subtlety with the word discretion. So if we're going to read this, so let's start in verse 3. It says, to receive instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To give discretion to the simple or prudence to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. So there's that word again. So maybe prudence is the better word because we've already used discretion here. Anyway, I'm not going to go too deeply into it, um, what words might have been better, so on and so forth. Um, but that is how you look up a word in the concordance. And I also wanted to kind of go through all of that just so you could kind of see how important it is to potentially look up a word, um, especially if one, you don't know the word. Um, you can easily do that in the dictionary. You can look it up. But that word, um, not so much here, but sometimes you'll find a word that has a definition that is no longer common usage. So I'm trying to think of one. Bowels is a good one. <laughs> when we think of the word bowels, we mean something totally different than what is often used in the Bible. So check that one out if you really want to um, get into an interesting word study. Um, but the, yeah, there are a lot of different words that um, were used in the Bible where the common usage of that word has changed because English is constantly changing. So anyway, that's the importance of um, why I think it's great to have a, um, a concordance on hand when you're studying. Um, it's another reason why I also like to parallel read and kind of toggle between some of these versions. I will be doing a, a, blah, blah, blah. I will be doing a video um, in the next week or so, where I will be talking about some things to consider when it comes to reading different translations of the Bible, what you can expect, and what um, you should consider if you're choosing a version. Um, that's a really, really, um, it can be a controversial hot topic for some people. Um, a lot of people have some very strong opinions on that. I'm not going to go super, super deep because I'm not a theology student. There's only so much that I know for myself, but I will kind of give you a general list of things to consider um, when you are choosing a Bible translation. Okay, if you have any questions about the concordance, please let me know. Um, this was really, really basic. <laughs> kind of concordance 101, um, but hopefully that'll kind of jumpstart you into using it for yourself if you never have. Um, the other resource that you want to consider is called Blue Letter Bible, and that's a website um, that is free to use. And if you don't have a Strong's and or don't have access to one or you're not going to buy one anytime soon, Blue Letter Bible, um, you can pull it up on online. You can also get the app on your device. And you can do this exact same thing on the website. It has the Strong's Concordance. It also has another concordance, the name for which escapes me right now. I cannot think of what it's called, but you can look up transliteration. It'll even pronounce the words for you in the Hebrew, Aramaic, or Greek, because again, this is not the first our first language for many of us. So it'll give you the correct pronunciation. And um, it'll also 
um, have all kinds of commentary that you can utilize um, in your study. So Blue Letter Bible, definitely check it out. Um, it has a bunch of different versions that you can look at as, as well as the Strong's. So highly, highly, highly recommend that website. Also, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that my copy of this book is not the latest. So when you go to buy one, if you're going to, um, the links that I have in the description, um, they may be like have a different cover because they've been updated since this one has been published. So just so you know, you might end up with a strong that has a different cover and might have some really cool updates <laughs> on the inside. So just so you know, before I keep rambling on and on, I'm going to end this video. Um, I really enjoyed um, reading your comments and seeing how this has inspiring, how this has been inspiring you and helping you out. That's really gratifying and it just makes me want to continue doing more content like this. So thank you so much for the feedback. Keep it coming and let me know if you have any suggestions or things that you might want to also see in this series. Okay, now I'm really done. I will talk to you guys later. Hope you're having a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.